Summer's approaching. Do you have your lawnmower all maintenance up and ready to go? Every year, people make the same mistake. They mow the grass up until fall, or you know, whenever it, it starts getting cold and the grass not growing anymore. Then they put their lawnmowers up, close it up, and then don't worry about it until uh, spring comes. And they gotta try to mow and everything, and hopefully the lawnmower's gonna start, uh, and then hopefully the blades are still sharp, and you know, whatever problems you were having when you shut it off still may be there. And then that's when you wanna go get it maintenance. And the problem with that is every mower shop gets swamped. So you take your lawnmower down, and they can't get the thing back to you, you know, for two or three months because they've got hundreds of lawnmowers to fix because everybody waits till spring to get a maintenance. So the best thing to do, maintenance your lawnmower and all your lawn equipment during the winter time. That's the best time. When you're not using it, maintenance in that downtime. But either way, this video is just a real short video just to kind of go over what you need to do to maintenance your lawnmower. Nevertheless, that's you know the time you either sharpen your blades or replace the blades. In my case, I replaced them. You may need your tires changed. Uh, carburetor adjusted. It just depends on when, you know what kind of what kind of mower or what kind of a, uh, equipment you have. So you know this video is not going to apply to every piece of equipment there is out there. But I would like to give you a few tips on my riding lawnmower, and there's going to be a few tips on some of the Briggs engines, or at least one design of the Briggs engines for lawnmowers. It's kind of common, and that's the type that uh, uh, just a regular push mower with like a three and a half to six horsepower motor that use the carburetor that bolts on top of the gas tank. But I just wanted to kind of go over this to give you an idea of what you need to do real quick to kind of get your lawnmower back maintenance and service. And do this every year and you'll be able to just mow your grass without any problems. So let's dive into the video. Let me stop this video for just one second. If you'll notice throughout this video, I'll mention super clean here and there. The reason being is super clean and rod shop have teamed up to do a super clean giveaway. That's one bottle of the uh, regular pump original uh, super clean spray bottle. And then the other one is uh, the aerosol can of degreaser that super clean makes. Both are great products. They're awesome. You really ought to get them. So the way to do that is to go down and comment super clean and that'll enter you to win. The winner will be randomly picked by me. I will reply to the winner winner in the comments. If you respond back to me, I'll send you an email address to where you can send me your name and your shipping address and SuperClean will send you these two great products. So don't miss out on this chance to get some free SuperClean products. So like I said, comment SuperClean and take a chance. So let's get back to this video. Now last year when I put this lawnmower up, I was in a hurry so I didn't get a chance to uh, wash it down or anything and as a matter of fact I didn't really get a chance to wash it down through any in between all the uh, mowing the grass so this thing's nasty and the engine's got an oil leak somewhere so I'm mad to pull the engine off but before I start doing all that what the best thing to do is to go ahead and get uh, some super clean and spray on it and get all this uh, degreased and cleaned off that way I can kind of spot where the oil's coming from even if I got to pull the motor off to fix at least I'll have an idea where it's coming from I mean, I've already checked the valve cover and some obvious stuff and it's not it, but that's one thing I like about Super Clean is going to make it really good and clean, look like new. It's going to make it easier to find uh, uh, oil leaks and stuff like that. But you can see this thing's pretty nasty, so I'm start spraying it down. Now, as you can see, the Super Clean cleaned all that gum and crap off the frame, so now I'll be able to spot where that oil leak's coming from. <laughs> this is a little handy tool. I'm not sure where I bought it from, but I'll put it down in the description if I can find it, where I got it from. But it uh, basically allows you to deflect the oil where you want it to go. Change the air filter. And look at your box. If it's really dirty inside, now this part's pretty clean, but I usually wash these out because you can see it collects, tries to pull in dirt from every angle. So you want to wash your 
cover for your filter, if it has one, will you filter out. And this one has a, it has an extra pad in here to catch extra particulates. And you want to wipe it out before you pull it on out. You don't want any debris falling down into your engine. Before you put your new spark plug in, just be sure to ensure you check the gap. I can't tell you what your gap's going to be. I looked this up and it's 32 and that's what I got. So just be sure to check your gap before you stick the spark plug in. Don't assume that it's going to be correct. Because it may be correct for one model but not for another one. So, And it could have you bent inside the box. But check your gap first. Be careful when you pull your spark plug boot off, it'll stick, and then sometimes uh, you can rip the boot or you can rip the spark plug wire. Always start your spark plugs with, by hand with your fingers. And if you can, screw it in all the way with your fingers. You don't want to cross thread your spark plug because then you're talking about having to pull the engine apart and fix the uh, threads in the head. And you don't torque these things down like you're trying to hold up 200 tons or something. When you get to the snug point and just turn it about a quarter turn or not even a quarter, about an eighth of a turn. If you have a fuel filter, it would be a good idea to change it every year because most lawnmowers are gravity fed. Well, I'll take it back. They're half and half. You'll have some that are gravity fed, so it just requires the only type of, of fuel pressure it's going to get from what gravity pushes. Then some other engines have fuel pumps on them, but the it's almost just a real light siphoning effect. So if the filter is clogged, it won't pull the fuel. So always keep your fuel filter changed out every year. Most of all these engines have adjustable valves, but unless you hear a little ticking or it's hard to start or something, or you hear a backfire when you go to shut it off, I would not adjust them every year. I only adjust them as needed. Free filter in. Air filter. Using this type of system, I'll put about three to four pumps in it. Because all you're doing is filling up a cavity in there. Now after you go around and find all your grease fittings and grease everything and lube all your joints and stuff like that with either I would eat for the levers and stuff I would use white lithium grease try not to spray it on any of your belt drives if you have belt drive then go around and ensure all your tire pressures are exactly what they're supposed to be uh, but try not to over inflate for a lawnmower like this it doesn't have shock absorbers so it requires the tires to flex a little bit so the back on the oh actually the tires all around are 10 pounds and that's what I've got them set at if your battery doesn't seem to want to start it after a sit for a winter and you put a little bit of charge on it, start it, and then it continues to start after sitting for a day or two, it's probably okay. Uh, but if the next time you go to start, you put battery charger back on again, it's time to change it. And you would also want to put a voltmeter across there and just make sure that it does putting out the correct voltage to keep the battery charged. Generators can go bad. And one other thing I wanted to mention is whenever you're doing your servicing and you're checking the air in the tires, greasing the fittings and stuff. It's also worth checking your brake adjustment. Now on this style on more, that nut there, if you tighten it, it tightens up the brake. If you loosen it, it loosens up the brake. And that's something you're just going to have to adjust a little, uh, adjust a little bit at a time to see if it's where you want it. Because you don't want your brake to come on too soon when you're clutching. You usually want your brake to grab once your uh, engine 
or your drive is fully you know clutched and not every lawnmower is going to be the same you may have a different type of clutch adjustment maybe in a rod it just depends but you know you want to adjust your brakes too to keep your brakes up to date every year when you go to servicing it now the next thing we're going to do is going to change the blades there's two ways of doing it if you've got a floor jack you can jack it up enough to use a tool you know i'm going to use an impact gun you can use a cordless or electric um, or you can just uh, hold it if you, if you can and break the nuts free and change the blades the other way of doing it is taking the deck off and probably that'd be the more proper way to do it is just to remove the deck drop it you know of course then again all lawnmowers don't have a removable deck you'll need to refer to your service manual on how to actually change the blades out but on this one i'm going to jack it up impact the nuts loose change the blades out and then while you have it if you've got this kind of style lawnmower it's got a deck and it's got spindles these spindles are greasable from underneath it's got grease fittings on the bottom which i think is kind of stupid i don't know why they put on top but the grease fittings are on the bottom of the deck so before you go sticking your grease gun on them you want to be sure to clean the grease fitting so that way you're not uh, pushing any dirt up into the bearings when you uh, cut the grease gun on it and as you see i put the new blades on i turned them to make sure they don't hit the deck anywhere because sometimes replacement blades are a little bit longer than the other ones that little darker spot up there is the grease fitting like which i said is stupid hopefully yours is on top where it makes most sense but if not your grease fitting will be on the bottom so be sure to pump that at least about six to eight times and get a good amount of grease in there because i mean that turns constantly Next, be sure to turn your blade all the way around make sure it doesn't hit the deck like i said the other option is just to pull the deck off and you know and it might be a good idea especially if you got holes in it if it's bent you need to straighten it up with a hammer weld up holes i've got some holes right there i need to weld up and i'm not going to right now now the next thing is you want to you know re relevel your deck and this is something you probably should do throughout as you're mowing because you those wheels on your deck can hit humps lumps stumps whatever roots and knock it out of level so what i've done is i've raised the lever raised my deck level all the way up high and slid some two before blocks can't see that one but put it somewhere around. Now what I'm going to do is set it down the next level to set it on top of it. So I'm going to raise it back up at next level. It's just catching that block still with weight on it. So this one could probably come down a little bit. And you'll have to look at your manual again and see where your adjustments are. Mine's got wing nuts on it like right there to lower. It's got one on each side. Let's zoom in on that baby got a big wing nut for adjustment so I'll just let it loose a little bit and let it come down off that block just a little bit tighter and then my deck level should be somewhat straight also always make sure your battery connections are clean if they're not uh, take it apart uh, wire brush it uh, they make and I'll put down in the description chemicals for killing uh, acid build up on uh, connections and a protectant you can spray a protectant on these if you have a real bad case of it uh, corroding everywhere that there is a clevis pin especially on your deck that's just one of four on this deck and the purpose of those is you can pull the clevis pins make sure there's always a washer on it too because without the washer sometimes it can jump the clevis pin or cause it to come off but it's inspect all your clevis pins like i said on this deck there's four there could be more or less on the, depending on the deck that you have. Now if you have this style uh, Briggs engine, it's the time that the carburetor bolts to the actual gas tank.
and use it as a priming bulb facing that way, sometimes at the front. Now the one I'm talking about will be, we'll use this gasket set. And now, play this right here. This is, even though it looks like a gasket, it really is, this is the gasket. This right here is basically reed valves. This little thing that sticks out, it's like a little flapper. And <clears throat> over a period of time, the gasket's to it, heat, cold, makes these brittle or makes these curl up. Then they don't act like little flapper valves. And what that does is it causes the engine to run poorly or won't start, or when you go to prime it, it really won't prime, uh, not correctly. Uh, or it may run and blow black smoke out the pipe or uh, have no power. <clears throat> That's usually these. These always go bad. And it could be that you have, you know, dirt in your tank. These carburetors, they have little stems that stick down and have screens on them. So it doesn't hurt sometimes to pull this apart and just clean the gas tank out and clean the screens off. And this is a sponge filter underneath this one screw. You take it out and you'll see a sponge filter in there. Uh, you can clean it out with gasoline or kerosene. Uh, and then you, uh, once it dries, if you've cleaned it out, then you'll want to put uh, 30 weight motor oil back in it and squeeze all the excess oil out of it and put it in there. It's just an oil soaked air filter. And don't forget to change your spark plug every year. In other words, at the beginning of the season, you're fixing to mow, go ahead and put a new spark plug in it. This doesn't have to be changed every year. This is only when you start having problems, but I would say at least every two years. And this is running on the second year. That's why I haven't pulled it apart for the video, but it's been started. Uh, it's set all winter. I primed it and it's fired right up. And you see the, the engine and stuff is dirty. I put it up dirty last year. Got, uh, got busy due to work. So it needs to be cleaned off. And you'll see here how the grass is built up underneath there. So all that needs to be cleaned out. Prop your lawnmower up on something. You don't want to turn it upside down with the oil and gas in the engine that can mess to keep, keep it from starting. But what you want to do is prop it up on something and you'll see up underneath here how gummed up it is with the leftover grass and stuff. It's, it's best, especially before you park it for the winter. And this is what I didn't do. I, I didn't get to do that, but you'll want to go ahead and get that cleaned out. And if you don't have a pressure washer, that's fine. Just get you a putty knife and kind of scrape that stuff off and then wash it off with uh, some super clean and a hose. And that'll work. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to drag out my pressure washer today. Another reason why you want to keep your lawnmower clean and wash it and stuff is when that grass packs up underneath the bottom, you get dirt on top. What that does is just start eating away at the uh, metal. First, it starts eating off the paint, then it gets to the metal and you start having rust holes. So it's good. Actually, if you've got a a thick moist yard and your lawnmower packs up regardless of a riding lawnmower push mower or what even an electric mower it's got an electric frame um, you want to go ahead and wash out underneath it every time that you uh, you mow that way it keeps it clean it helps blow the grass out a lot better than uh, if it's not so as you saw the, the video is really short there's nothing really a whole lot to it but I mean we cover I cover keeping it washed and maintenanced uh, I mean, you keep, whenever time you, especially if you have a yard that's really thick grass, whatever, and your lawnmower just gets totally covered, you want to keep it washed off. The main reason why is when you keep letting the grass pile up on, especially on a deck or in places and stuff, and it gets wet and moisture or anything like that, that actually eats away at the deck. It's the same as a car. Anytime you have any painted surface and you let dirt stay on it, the dirt collects moisture and actually turns into like an acid. It will eat through the paint and eventually get into the metal and rust it. So there's no reason to have your deck rust out like that. So keep it washed. Uh, make sure you're, you, if you have uh, adjustable brakes, keep your brakes adjusted. Uh, look at your belts and inspect them. Usually your drive belt will last maybe four years, like on, on this style or more than I'm in this video. It has just one big long drive belt in there. They last about, you know, four years before you have to start really worrying about them wearing out. It just depends on what you use it. I, I'm a over two acre lot. You may only have a half acre, so you're not going to run it as long as you know what I do. So it's going to depend on your use, um, you know, like how big your yard is and stuff, how long you run it, how aggressive you are with it. I mean, some people put it in first or second gear and run around at turtle speed, and you know, of course, the longer it's running, the more wear it has on the belt. Some people put it in high gear and pop that clutch and jerk it. So I mean, it just depends on how you handle your equipment. But 
three to four years on a drive belt is probably about what you're getting. Same with the uh, the deck belt. Now your mower may be hydrostatic, so anything you need to know to service it, you're going to need to go back to the uh, uh, manual and look in there and see what it tells you and how to get to certain things. But I did just want to go over to some idea of basic maintenance and basically tell you keep your lawnmower maintenance through the winter so you're ready for spring. So if you found this video helpful, uh, be sure to leave me a comment and like and subscribe and uh, always check back because I'm always working on something completely different from the next thing to, to the next thing. It's just a crazy world. Cars are just as crazy. See you in the next one.